<clears throat> hey everybody, welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. <laughs> uh, this feels weird to be talking normal. I've been sick with, among other things, a sore throat for a long time, so it kind of still hurts to talk, but I'm going to try my best because I need to make a voiceover for this video. So a couple days ago, I began a series of projects, and at that point, my throat still hurt, so I didn't do any talking, so I'm going to do my talking now, a couple days later, when I'm feeling a bit better. There are three projects I was doing this day. Number one, the most important, is culling Constance. Then, once Constance is gone, and the cage she is now living in is now empty, then I have to shuffle some rabbits around into different housing for different reasons. Then finally, the most exciting part is I get to weigh a whole bunch of baby rabbits and see how fast they're growing, which will hopefully be super exciting and gratifying and prove to me that I'm doing a good job raising them. Alright, let's talk about Miss Constance here. If you don't remember, this girl has had a lot of problems. It took her a super long time to get pregnant. And every single time she's been exposed to baby rabbits, whether they be the kits of other rabbits or even her own babies, she likes to chew on them and eat them and kill them. She's had three chances, and each of those chances she has completely failed. Her last failure was giving birth to six babies, all outside of a nest box. She didn't build a nest or pull any fur. All of her babies got super cold because she didn't care for them properly. A lot of those babies were stillborn. Only one baby wasn't stillborn. And that one she chewed the foot off of and it ended up dying anyways. So she has been a very bad doe. I've given her ample opportunity to be a good doe, and obviously she's not taken the opportunity. So she's going to be butchered today, and I will eventually replace her with either one of Acrobat's babies or one of Zuzu's babies, who's a girl, whenever they get older and grow up and are able to breed. So Constance is leaving, so let's do that now. Okay, now that Constance is gone, Acrobat's litter of babies, who is now eight weeks old, can you believe how big they are? They're huge! Anyway, they have been in a kind of a small area. They have three regular standard size cages all connected, but there's so many of them and they're getting so big that it would be nice to give them a bigger space. So, they are now going to take over Constance's cage and get to roam all six cages, so we're basically doubling their housing area, which is awesome. Okay, now scooching over a few feet to the other cage or hutch we have. This hutch has Zuzu and her five-week-old babies in here, and this is a bit of a problem. If you remember back to February 14th, when these baby bunnies were first born, Zuzu was living with Sterling, these babies' daddy. She had lived with him all throughout her pregnancy, during her birth, and then like three or four days after giving birth, until I separated Sterling and Zuzu to put him in the colony as our main breeding buck. So just like Acrobat, Zuzu had ample time to get rebred after giving birth. It's the natural cycle for rabbits to be rebred right after giving birth. But also like Acrobat, Zuzu did not take that opportunity which is evident by her not having another litter of babies, and it being way past her supposed due date. So this is really frustrating. Not only has this happened to Acrobat, but it's also happened to Zuzu. I did everything right and rebred them at the proper time, but they didn't get pregnant. But I don't want to give up on her yet. She has super good genetics. I know and love both of her parents and some of her grandparents, so she comes from really good stock. And she is really hardy. She's a really good mom. So I don't want to get rid of all these qualities too soon. So I'm going to give her another chance. Mm. 
Miss Zuzu is going to move into one of the tractors with Sylvan. We ended up having to move some of our tractors. They're still off the ground because the grass isn't growing yet, so they can't like be actual tractors yet. But we used to have them in our pumpkin patch, except for that Roxy is now in the dormant pumpkin patch because her and Fang, for some reason, all of a sudden have decided they like to fight a lot. And they've actually like wounded them, each other and like drawn blood and stuff, so that's kind of scary. So they're separated now. But Roxy loves to harass rabbits, and so having them in the same area would be bad. So we've moved them into the garden, so they'll be able to fertilize the garden beds until the grass gets tall enough that we can turn these temporary hutches back into tractors by moving them along pasture. In the green one is our still unnamed future awesome forever breeding buck. He's too young to breed right now, so we're just waiting for him to grow up a little bit. And then in the gray one is Sylvan, our only remaining Angora buck, who I will periodically shave and use his fur to make yarn. That's why his fur is so long. But he's also a very good baby maker. So Zuzu gets to come live with him for a couple weeks to give her ample, ample, huge amounts of chance to get pregnant again and hopefully have a second successful litter this breeding season. Looks like Sylvan is doing his job just fine. I'll mark this day on the calendar and expect babies in about a month. Now, some astute people may be wondering why I didn't just stick Zuzu in the colony like I did with Acrobat when we had the same problem with her. So let me explain that. When I put Acrobat in the colony, there were no babies in the colony. But soon after Acrobat was put in, another colony doe, Leah, gave birth. And I'm happy to report that her babies are doing super well and she's being an awesome mom. Out of the 13 babies she had, we still have 9 thriving balls of fluffness. Having 13 children when you only have 8 teats means it is very likely that a whole bunch of them are going to pass away. Especially when another rabbit, Constance, who's now butchered, starts attacking your babies and clawing their backs and chewing off their ears and other terrible stuff. So a couple of the small runts died and a couple of the very wound wounded babies died, but 9 out of 13 with a killer rabbit attack is amazing and she's feeding them super well. They're all fat and chubby. And this is all without pellets, mind you. But because this is the case, I am deathly afraid of changing anything about the colony at all because I don't want to scare her or throw off her instincts and have her stop nursing her babies or have her litter fail. That's why I have paused finishing the colony and all the building and construction work that would involve. And also I decided not to add a new rabbit into the colony. It just naturally adds a lot of stress to everything and stress is exactly the thing I want to avoid so I can give Leah as much chance as possible to be a good mom to her babies. I am contemplating maybe moving Zuzu into the colony later when Leah's babies are older and weaned if we can get it between litters because by that point we may have younger litters and more babies so we'll have to see how all the births work out but if I can put Zuzu in the colony sometime soon I will. Now the sun is setting even more and I think I have just enough light to do my favorite of these three projects which is weighing the baby bunnies. We will first start with Zuzu's freshly weaned five week olds and i must admit i didn't do a very good job of filming any of it weighing is always a crazy time so i'll just tell you the results we got all seven of the babies she birthed are still alive and doing well and if you can believe it all seven of them are boys which <laughs> which is completely insane i was super excited to keep some girls from this litter but I guess if there's no girls, I'm just not gonna keep any, so that stinks. But they were all pretty good weights. All of them were more than one pound. The smallest was 1.1 pounds, and the biggest was 1.4. So for our rabbitry, with our rabbit's genetics, and with the diet we feed, that's pretty good. 
Then I figured since I had all the materials out and I still had some light left, I would weigh the bigger bunnies because they're about 8 weeks old. So I'm trying to weigh everybody every month. And I thought it'd be fun to compare the two weighings. About a month ago, when they were 4 weeks old, I recorded everything and now I've done it again so I thought it'd be fun to compare. So like Zuzu's litter, Acrobat's litter has not lost any babies. The original 8 who were born are still alive and thriving. But unlike Zuzu's litter, we have 3 bucks and 5 does. It's really easy to remember. All the spotted ones are bucks and all the solid ones, so the black ones and the solid chestnuts are does. All these kits were also around 1 pound. The smallest rabbit was 0 0.5, but he's been an obvious runt all his life, so that wasn't very surprising. And then there was a three-way tie for the biggest rabbits, and they were all 1.1 pounds. Then one month later, it turns out that one of the rabbits I thought was a doe could possibly be a buck. Now, I pride myself in my very hard-won ability to accurately tell genders. While I'm still practicing with telling the genders of newborns, I'm pretty pro at telling when they're four weeks old. The space in between newborn and four weeks, like one week, two weeks, three weeks, it's nearly impossible for anyone, no matter how experienced, to tell. But I am pretty up there on accuracy. So getting one wrong, I feel like I'm slipping. But I guess getting so many right with just one wrong isn't that bad. So we actually have an equal split, four bucks and four does. Then for the weights, everyone gained another pound. So in a month, they gained a pound. The lowest, the little runt we have, used to be 0 0.5 and now he's 1.6. So he's gained one pound and one ounce. Well, maybe not actually, like they've been eating. So some of this weight is their food and not like their muscle or whatever, but there's really not much I can do about that. So then the highest we had was this solid chestnut doe she was one of the biggest last month and she's the biggest this month 2.6 pounds she was 1.4 last time so she might be a very likely candidate for replacing constance if she continues to be one of the biggest kits in this litter all right so now all my projects are done i butchered constance i put different rabbits in different housing and i weighed all of our big kits my sickness is a lot better I'm so sorry there was such a huge gap in videos recently. Now that I'm feeling much better, I'm going to try to be on my normal schedule again, making a whole bunch of videos all the time. Thank you for joining me for this video. Can you believe how big all these rabbits are? Baby bunnies grow so fast, let me tell you. So make sure you follow along to see how these babies grow even more, because hopefully a lot of these baby rabbits are going to be butchered pretty soon, and I will finally reach my goal I've had for three years ever since January of 2020 to butcher an entire litter of rabbits who are up to their butcher weight, healthy, and fed properly. Thanks for watching. Bye.